after 12 years old, I, I come from wealth. So I mean, my family, my brothers were, you know, uh, millionaires at a very young age, own marijuana stores and do very well for themselves. My sisters do well for themselves. So after 12 years old, things were pretty smooth sailing. But um, when I lost my businesses in my marriage um, and my mom got sick, I, um, I immediately, uh, you know, turned to drugs. Welcome back, everybody. We're here with Star. You're the second star I met today. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Yeah, uh, Star, where are you from originally? I'm from Washington State. If you don't mind me asking, how old are you? Uh, 46. 46, Washington State? By the Canadian border. I know where that is, but isn't there a lot of a lot of serial killers up there when yeah. you're growing up? Yes, there is. You <laughs> Almost Ted all Bundy? the serial killers. Yes. Uh, what yes. about uh, what's his name? Oh, what's the other one? Uh, Green River Killer. Uh, yeah, Green River Killer. There's another one. There's a couple of them. There's, There's another one. Huh? There's yeah, more, there huh? is. Big one. The big ones are all come from Washington. Yeah, they are. <laughs> what is it about Washington that made people go nuts? Um, well, it rains a lot in Washington, but one thing is, is that, you know, I mean, I think the people are really. You know, there's some good people there. It's way different than here in Vegas, I can tell you that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm used to commodity and uh, sticking together, and I don't have that here, unfortunately. In, in Washington, we just do a lot of sticking together, and here it's very uh, to each his own and, you know, fit for yourself. Yeah. And uh, right, you know, I mean, it's really just a, you know, sink or swim world. Uh, you feel alone out here a lot. What was, what was it like growing up in Washington? What did you uh, it was it kid? was good it was good but I um, I always had the city girl I think mentality no matter what um, but it was good we uh, rode horses and you know did a lot of we did a lot of stuff with our family really close to the family and um, and yeah uh, we barbecued and did just lots of fun stuff uh, skiing boats a lot of water a lot of fun stuff a lot of fishing how was your childhood my childhood was uh, it was decent it wasn't it there was times where it was rough um, my mom was um, and until I was 11 and um, so she worked you know, had five kids and um, was gone a lot and so brothers and sisters were in charge uh, like a lot of families and um, and things were rocky we, we we had to survive off you know a little bit of money and um, she taught us a lot though she taught us how to you know be a go-getter and you don't need anybody um, to be very independent and um, she became a pharmacist so things got better around 11 or 12 years old did, did, was there any abuse in the home growing up? You know, not really. There was a little bit of yelling, but no, I mean, besides just me and my brothers and sisters, there was abuse in that that time, you know, it, where we were beating on each other, you know what I'm saying, just fighting and stuff as brother and sister, but not not no real um, serious abuse uh, besides my sisters both had abusive relationships. I didn't have them. Um, so you grew up with both parents or one? Um, nope, just uh, one parent, and my brother was basically the dad of the family. Okay. You still talk to anybody? Uh, yeah, my mom passed away while I was here in December, and it's been very uh, limited conversations. A lot of times here you don't have a cell phone. I have one right now. It's not work. Yeah. <laughs> um, so um, you're limited. You're, you're limited on access to be able to talk to people. I have four kids, uh, always been in their life, their entire life. Uh, my last one is 15, and uh, you know I'm definitely struggling with that, not being in her life right now. Um, it gets to a point where you just uh, try to block it out. Uh, Why did you move to Vegas? So I moved to Vegas originally for a uh, T-Mobile job. I had lost um, multi-million dollar businesses with HVAC and plumbing and um, and in the process during COVID and a federal job that was sideways. And I, you know, after 12 years old, I, I come from wealth. So I mean, my family, my brothers were, you know, uh, millionaires at a very young age own marijuana stores and do very well for themselves. My sisters do well for themselves. So after 12 years old, things were pretty smooth sailing. But um, when I lost my businesses in my marriage um, and my mom got sick, I, um, I immediately, uh, you know, turned to drugs. And, and, uh, but what I did is I was trying to straighten out actually, and I had a bad relationship there and I wanted to leave Washington thinking that it would get better somewhere else. And so um, I applied for a job in San Diego and here for a T-Mobile job in sales, because I'm really good at sales, and I got the one here. And uh, what happened is, is I didn't, um, I was asking some questions about to be able to do my job better, and uh, she found, the boss found it as um, like condescending and rude. And so, uh, and I didn't, you know, they're different here, it's a different, you know, universe here. And so I, she said that, you know, basically she fired me that day, and said, yeah, I think you're gonna be a good fit. And after that, I kind of, um, then my mom started getting sicker and sicker, and there was 
it's all over here. And so, you know, of course, I, have, I had Dendrug before, and then I stopped for a long time. And then um, they're so easily available here. The first thing, of course, you're going to do when, when something goes wrong is you're going to turn to um, And so that's what I did. And, you know, and here I am. Um, then I didn't have any money left. And so I got hungry one day. And I decided that I'd start you know, uh, earlier, uh, some of the viewers might be wondering why you're looking around so much. Uh, it's because you said you have a manager. I never heard that term before. Yes. What yeah, is I have a manager? manager. Yeah, he, I have a manager. Um, I, I, I don't call a pimp, but a, a manager is similar to um, a pimp, but not. Um, he, he's definitely He does things way different. Uh, he's more of a protection, and um, he gives me um, a roof over my head, and this is a new manager. I've worked with a couple of them. This one's working out really well. Um, it's only been a couple of days, and he's already put me and made sure I've got a safe place to go every night. Um, but we'll see, you know, what happens. I mean, they're, they're here to profit, you know, off you, of course. And so um, I try to be a businesswoman. I try to use that business savvy, um, you know, attitude and my knowledge in here. But the thing is, is that, you know, these are, these are men that um, are very, you know, uh, you're here by, I'm here by myself. Let's just say I'm here by myself. And so I can't, you know, I can only stand up how much I can stand up. And then, it, you know, the rest of it's like, you know, I can speak my mind, but you know, that's about it. I mean, it just kind of goes from there. You can't really make money out here too well if you don't have a manager or a uh, out here. How much right? can you make a day? Um, so out here you can make a day if, if I really go hard. The, the most I've made is uh, 1700 in the day. One day? Uh, in one day. And um, that was basically work from six in the morning. It was about five thirty in the morning, and I stopped at probably I think it was like one or two in the morning. Um, and so, and I think a couple of my morning ones were with that um, seventeen hundred, but uh, and I could make more than that even. Um, but I only had a husband and then a couple of boyfriends before I started. Probably very difficult for me my first uh, sex date, and, and very difficult for me to um, you know go and do back to back um, dates without a place to shower or go right to. And so I get angry out here a lot, you know. But I, sometimes you don't see another way. Yeah. Even when you try to, you know, try to escape doing that, it doesn't always work. Um, the money is fast and easy, but it gets spent fast and easy too. Um, and, you know, you're handing money to people all over here because you kind of have to because people are there's a lot of bullies here in Vegas, and they make sure that they get everybody gets a cut in your work, even though you don't know why you're giving people money that you don't owe money to. So, especially if you're from another state, they definitely take advantage of you here. I feel like. So you think a lot of women are being taken advantage of? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I look around a lot too. I have, um, you know, former and stuff, and so I look around too because you know they pull up on me and they rob me on a regular basis. Um, they feel I owe them money. So if you don't work for them, then you're gonna get robbed and uh, by them. They're gonna be looking out for you and they're gonna try to see when you get a date done and they're gonna pull up on you and they're gonna take your money. And so that happens over and over again throughout the night, sometimes and throughout the week. So I'm in a different location right now. I'm usually in another location. Um, I am kind of that, you know, just run from the former. Do you have uh, some kind of social media or email that you could share with us in case yeah. I want to help you out? Yeah, so my last name is uh, Burrell, B-U-R-R-E-L-L, -L, first name Angela33 at gmail.com. Uh, anything will help. It's just one less date that I have to go to. I do utilize money and get a, you know, go get a hotel room, you know, a safe place to sleep at night and food in my stomach right now. Like right now I'm hungry. Yeah, I'm going to get something to eat, don't worry. And so, um, you know, this is just kind of the life that we live, you know, and it's really, just really you, hard to get out of. Do you feel you have to do this kind of lifestyle? You have to. I mean, I, I don't know anybody. Uh, I mean, there's girls out there that are uh, don't use I, I don't know. Uh, there's far and few between here in Vegas. And so, um, yeah, you have to. There's no, uh, this life is not a life you can do sober. Do you uh, mind like, telling us what you're on? Yeah, I do. Um, yeah. Nothing else? I know, but nothing else. Pentel? I don't do anything. It is a physical addiction. I, I, I try to steer away from I've never done it. Um, steer away from drugs. what? Steer away from anything that has a physical addiction. Oh, okay. So, you know, anything like Fetty or, you know, blues or stuff. But I, I definitely see it's so sad out here um, what they've done, you know, what's done to people. And I used to work in a drug and alcohol training center for seven years. Yeah. yeah. Do you believe in God or higher power? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. 
Yep. Uh, Have I mean, you ever tried NA or anything like that? Um, yeah, I did uh, quite a few years ago, and you know, I just. Uh, I don't have my, I just lost my mom. My kid has gone to Washington and I've lost some access to her. So I don't really have any desire to get clean right now. Really. You lost your mom? Yeah, I lost my mom in December. I was headed on the plane to go and see her and uh, 10 minutes before I got on the plane, she uh, passed away. Um, she had a disease, it's like a, um, uh, I just, in a space, uh, LGG. And so it's a, just kind of like, it's a, is, it's a, a, can, a type of cancer, um, but it attacked her really quickly. And um, you know, this isn't a false story. This is you're going to see on my Facebook. Is she really did pass away in December, and it was the hardest thing ever. How old was she? And my mom was 66. How old? 66. That's young. Mm -hmm. She only had your your 46. Mm -hmm. 20. She had your 20. Were you really close to her? Really, really close to her. My mom always lived about a half hour away from where I was at at all times. Where was she living when she passed? Uh, she was living in Idaho with my brother. He had built her a house on his property. In Idaho? What, what, what part of Idaho? Um, the twin, right by Twins Lake. I'm so mm -hmm. sorry. Yeah. I'm very close to my family, too. Yeah. And me and my She's sisters done. and brothers have kind of just, they're, they're really upset with me for coming here. And I just have so many bad memories in Washington. I just haven't wanted to go back. Do they know that you're on the streets? Um, yeah. And I have mental illness too, so I have bipolar and very very personality disorder and um, anxiety and depression. Um, yeah. So I'm supposed to take meds, and I'm not on my meds, of course. Uh, so. Have you ever thought about going to rehab? Yeah, I've thought about it. I've thought about it. I'm just not there yet. I just, I mean, I'm not there. What's stopping you? And I don't. I don't know. Right before I came here, I was. Uh, and uh, beat every day in Alabama. 13 days I was kidnapped and, and uh, taken to a tent at this guy's backyard. And uh, that's how I ended up from here to, to um, Alabama to Washington. Alabama? And that looks like him. The Escalade, if it pulls in here, the black Escalade, I'm gonna have to get off of it. What, what, what car are you looking for? The, the black, uh, black, black Escalade. Escalade. It's a black Escalade. You know what, we could stop this interview if you're feeling comfortable. I don't yeah, wanna I, make I can't, you, yeah, I don't wanna be out here. I don't wanna work. stress you out anymore. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for this interview. I'll leave you my contact information. If you need to get anywhere or you want to, just want to talk to somebody, you can always call me, okay? Thank you. Maybe we can do an update on you. You, I see a, uh, I see a lot of pain in your eyes and I see there's a lot of ambition in you too. Maybe you can get back to all that. You yeah. Know? You look great. Thank you. 46? Yeah. I appreciate it. I wish you the best and God bless you. you. Thank you. Thanks. Take care.